Hey everybody, welcome back to the KOTLC fanbase. My name is Austin, and we are back with another awesome KOTLC video. Today, we have a very fun challenge, and I'm very excited to do this video. Today's video is the Random Page KOTLC Challenge. I'll go through every single KOTLC book. I'll use a number generator and pick a random page of that book, read it and react to it, and we'll see if we have any cool pages that we're gonna randomly pick. We'll probably have some awesome pages, and we'll probably have some boring pages, but in this video, we'll just have to see. But before we get in this video, make sure to like this video and comment down below if you like this type of concept where I pick a random page in each book and maybe if you guys want a part two of this. Subscribe to our channel. We know only about 30% of you guys that are watching us are subscribed. So subscribe for more KFTLC content. And remember, our merch is out and you can go check it out at bit.ly slash KFTLC fanbase merch. We have a lot of cool designs, so make sure to go check that out. Let's jump straight into the video. All right, so I have the first book and I'm going to get right into it. So I'm going to pick a random number. All right, so I'm going to generate the number. So the number I'm going to get is 246. So now I'm going to go into the book and look at number 246. So I'm gonna read that out to you guys and react to it. At her next alchemy session, she dropped her books. She kept her back to Lady Galvin as she bent to retrieve them. And before she could wimp out, she closed her eyes and concentrated on her thoughts. It was easier than she planned. Lady Galvin had the exam on her mind, so Sophie didn't have to probe deeper into her memory. She was deciding between making Sophie turn a rose to iron or making her turn brass to copper, the hardest space of transmutations. Sophie tucked both ideas away, then closed her mind and picked up her books like nothing had happened. She expected to feel triumphant, and that she had a fighting chance. Plus, she was right. Lady Galvin was giving her the hardest challenge to try to fail her, and she thwarted her plan. So why did she feel like she eat a huge bowl of slime? Distracted and uncomfortable, she spilled the gas rooms and made the whole room reek of rotten fungus. Study hall was worse. Everyone poured over their notes while Sophie sat frozen, afraid to open her. By the time she got home, she was on the verge of tears. She couldn't touch her dinner, couldn't bear the concerned looks on Grady's and Adeline's faces. She didn't deserve sympathy. She didn't deserve anything. She had hidden in her room the rest of the night. Sleep was a lost cause. Alone in the darkness with a snoring imp shattering the silence and Ella in her arms, she forced herself to admit the truth. Wow, that was a crazy page we got for the first one that we actually got the page where Sophie broke the rules of telepathy to actually find out what's on her exam so that she can stay another semester at Foxfire. Wow, this was a really crazy one to actually get on for our first try. I mean, probably aren't gonna get a better one than that. So let's actually just, you know, go straight into exile and let's see what random page we get there. All right, I've got the number generator up. So let's just click it and see what we get. 204, so page 204. We're going to see what random page we get. 204, was unable to plant any memories of this place in her mind. Perhaps they've never been. If anyone came here uninvited, they'd be trapped. The walls felt like they were closing in, and Sophie sucked in her breath, reminding herself that they weren't trapped. At least she hoped they weren't. Max City and Is also had the dwarves know we're here, Alvin added. And why they knew we weren't a threat when we arrived. They could sense his presence. We only had 12 Max City and stones in our possession, one for each member of the council. There were gifts from the dwarves when we signed the treaty. If someone were to set foot here without carrying any, Dwarves would assume they're here without the cops' permission to restrain them. For us, they can feel the Maxidian from the Counselor Terror's pendant, so they sent someone to refresh us for the next leg of our journey, which we should probably get started on. Are you ready? She wasn't, not even a little bit. But she'd come this far. Alan approached the wall, tracing his fingers across the smooth surface until he found a narrow slip hidden by the shadows. He slipped the Maxidian pendant into it and twisted it like it was a key. Air hissed and stunned scraped ground rumbled as the heavy wall spun clockwise, scattering clouds of dust as it slowly revealed a narrow doorway leading into darkness beyond. Well, that was a very interesting page that we got from the random number generator. I honestly, in this part of the book, an exile, I have no idea what this section is about. I mean, I'm sure most of you guys know, but I only read the series one time, and I'm not really picked up on these really small details, but the only thing I can really think of is that she's an outer and they're going on a journey, so... I have really no idea what this actually is. But a few guesses I have is when they're trying to like visit apprentice or pre visit some some never seen member that's in jail. Let's go on to the next book, Everblaze, and let's hope we get a better one. All right, so I have the page numbers in the random number generator, and I'm going to press it, and we get 216 this time. Let's go straight in to 216. We've had so far all 200 numbers, so that's kind of crazy. And we have. She tried to think of more, but they all seemed like versions of emotions she had already listed. Were there really more negative emotions than positive ones? That's enough to start, Bronte told her. So which is your objective? 
The thought of trying to make Bronte feel love made Sophie want to vomit. And she was feeling anything but peaceful at this moment, which left her with happy. She squeezed her eyes tight and tried to remember happy things, hoping her instincts would kick in after that. Her childhood memories were mixed with too much sadness now that she left her family. So she focused on her life, remembering her friends and Gradient and Line and Sylvia. But even those memories were swirled with so much doubt and worry and uncertainty. I'm waiting, Miss Foster, with Bronte and Oh, please, it's only been a few seconds, kind of told them. You're doing great, Sophie. The glimmer of praise helped her relax, and she shifted her mind to smaller men. The day she rescued Iggy, her first flight was Sylvia. Every time she, she stared into a pair of beautiful teal eyes, warm energy swelled in her mind, and she fueled it with warm energy. Until her brain felt ready to burst with excess energy. Blue light rimmed her vision as she focused on Bronte and channeled the force out of her mind. So this was definitely a very important page in the books where Sophie is actually training for inflicting with Bronte and actually seeing as you know she doesn't just have telepathy, she has another ability and she is a very powerful elf. And she actually is able to channel like positive energy while Bronte channels negative energy. This was a definitely a very interesting and random page to actually get. So let's jump straight into Book 4 Never Seen. Alright, I'm going to do the number generator on Book 4 Never Seen. Let's see what random page we get. 319 is the page we get. So let's go flip into 319. Alright, so we have page 319 and it says, Prentice was living proof of the pain such mistakes could cause, and now she had a chance to set things right. They brought Prentice to a stone cottage surrounded by crumbling paths and mossy walls. It sat nestled in a verdant valley, blanketed with grassy fields and rolling hills under a gray sky swirling with mist. Are we in England? Sophie asked, feeling like she had fallen into a period movie. The only thing missing were horse-drawn carriages. It's possible, Mr. Corkle said, picking one of the stones to open the door to the house. We rarely considered human land claims when we chose our habits. He led everyone inside, and the house interior reminded Sophie of the healing center at Foxfire. The floor was sleek, silver, and along one wall was a neatly blanketed cot, as well as a table covered in bottles of youth and vials of medicine. Two of the other walls were floor to ceiling apothecary shelves. Hundreds of tiny square drawers, Sophie was sure, were filled with all manners of elixirs. The last wall had a window overlooking the lush valley along with a counter, a sink, and a full set of alchemy. How long have you had this place? she asked. Since Prentice's memory break, Mr. Fulton said. We knew we had years to wait for your abilities to develop, but we wanted to be ready just in case. So this is a pretty interesting page to actually get on. Um, it's actually the exact moment after they broke Prentice out, and they now have Prentice in at his, his new facility where they're going to rehabilitate him, get make sure he's better, and that was pretty interesting to get. You know, the exact moment after where they broke Prentice out. We're getting very lucky with these pages. Let's go on to the next one and see if our luck continues and we keep getting these very cool pages. Let's get on to the next one. All right, so I have, new, I have the new numbers in. Let's see what number we get. I'm clicking the number generator and boom, 301, a very close number to 319. So let's go ahead and pull that up in the book. Turn to stare out the windows. He held me four times before he gave up and let Elwyn hail out. Maybe if I had answered, we could recover something from Syrah's mind. Do we know where Syrah leaked from, Sophie asked? She told Wiley that she was going back to Mysterium, which matched what her registry pendant recorded, Mr. Burkle said. She went to take inventory of her stall. Syrah had a small sidewalk booth. She sold custom hair ribbons, Tyrion explained. It wasn't as fancy as she had before Prentice was arrested, but very few nobles wanted to support the wife of a criminal, so she worked, moved to a working class city. I went to that stall, Bielema said. My dad took me when I was little. I still have the combs he bought. And I remember being surprised when we went to Mysterium instead of Atlantis. Alan was always trying to find small ways to assist Syrah, Tyrion muttered, as if buying hair clips could make up for destroying her family. The words sliced through the room, too dull to draw any blood, but Fitz and Deanna winced all the same. I'm sorry, Tyrion told them. I just hate having to think about this again. Wiley's been through so much and I keep trying to make it up to him, but no matter what I do, he pounded his fist against the window. Sophie crossed the room and rushed the hand on his arm. Kurgan wasn't a touchy, silly kind of person, but... So this page is actually kind of cool. We actually learned a little bit more about Syrah's disappearance when she went into the light leap and faded away. And a little bit more on Kurgan and how he has his relation with Wiley and very protective and he doesn't seem to like the Vathers that much. So that was a pretty cool page to actually read about. And, you know, very random, just a random argument. And it seems like they were collecting information on Syrah for their mission. Let's go on to book six, Nightfall, and let's get there in the page. All right, so I have I have the next generator set up, and boom, and I clicked it, and we have 
119. So more to start on Nightfall. Let's go check that out. So this is a chart. This is the start of chapter 12. Glad you're both here, Lady Giselle said, as Keith tapped on the point in Parker's room. That makes everything so much easier. You can see us, Sophia asked, to leave your voice sounded strong and steady. Of course, just like I can see your goblin leaning behind me, looking ready to snatch up in Parker and crush it. I wouldn't let him do that, by the way. Obviously, we need my help, otherwise, you never would have decided to trust me. We don't trust you, Keith said, his hand shaking so much. He barely kept his hold on the plug for the gadget. Wow, so this was a very interesting page that we actually get to uncover in this random thing. Keith has to use his blood to actually call Lady Gisela. And, and we don't have too much of the conversation, but we had the start of the conversation with Lady Gisela. And this is a very key part of the book. That was very interesting to uncover about Lady Gisela and Keith. I think that was the first random page we got with Keith in it. Let's get on to book seven flashback. Alright, I have the number generator set up for the slime book, 1 to 845. Let's see what we get. 441. Okay, that's that's pretty in the middle of the book. Let's see what happens in the flashback. Hopefully we're not in the hospital bed. Alright, page 441. Mostly Dex submitted, which wasn't the answer Sophie had been expecting. She'd always thought of Dex as a part of her same team, but then she remembered how often Dex had to stay home working on Dex by himself, while the rest of the group tackled some other project. It's lonely speaking a language few others understand, isn't it? Tinker asked him. Dex looked away as he nodded, and so he tried to think of something to say. But all thoughts slid out of her head when she caught a glimpse of Tinker's laugh. The room was bigger than she'd been imagining, and much, much messier. Each of the long steel tables was piled with gadgets that were still in the process of creation. Their gears left exposed. Wires tangled in every direction, and the copper floor was covered in screws and nuts and bolts and shards of metals and glass. The air smelled like grease and metal and oil, but not unpleasantly so. It was a a place where hands got dirty and set to work, and all the whirring and humming and ticking gave the space a buzz and energy. And he so he went grabbing the nearest tool and built something. Next looked desperate to do the same thing, his eyes staring hungrily at the half-finished gadgets as they fall and tinker deeper into a path. They had to weave around enormous springs that connected the floor to the ceiling, like columns, and they eventually stopped in front of a cluster wide enough to hide, jutting from the floor on these white swirls. Wow, that was a very, very detailed page of Tinker's workshop, and this is the first page I actually Dex was on in our randomized pages, in our randomized pages, and this was a very, very detailed scene of basically just whole page a detailed scene of Tinker's workshop and all the gadgets and like so detailed and I can tell Shannon Messenger did a great job on this page. There's not much else to say about this page but it is very cool to see the detail. Let's get on. Let's get on to the last and final page from Legacy. Alright so I have the number generator set up for the final number generation. 704. That's going to be a very interesting page in Legacy. Let's see what it is. Lord Cassius shrugged. Physical confrontation with your mother is something I'd prefer to avoid. Sophie couldn't necessarily blame her for that. And miraculously, it didn't take that much longer to settle the group. Dex, Stina, Fitz, and Viana would go with Constable Bronte, Counselor Derek, and Counselor Zarina to the dwarves' main marketplace, along with Wutzer, Logies, and Grizzle. And Sophie, Maraca, and Wiley would go with Counselor Nolan, Counselor Viora, and Counselor Orlai to the Grand Hall, along with Ro, Sandor, and Ford. They'd have one last person, but they also had a Sinia Pat. Which Sophie felt a little guilty about since the other team was left ahead of it, straight into the trap. Then again, she also wasn't sure about having counselors who were a vociferator, a, a conjurer, and an empath was going to be removed and hold on to it. And she really wished she could think of an unsuspicious way to trade counselor Lion Girl to the other two. All right, Mr. So Bookle said, and then Steve realized that he wasn't technically in part of the mission and definitely wasn't in charge of returning to counselor Bronte. Everyone should go change, gather any weapons, and say our goodbye from the building. It's usually up. We'll notify Elwin to make sure he's on standby at the healing center and meet back here in an hour and head to the home. That should allow us to be in position about an hour before the Never Seems deadline. And we'll notify King and Key about what's happening. And with that, everyone's scattered to do as Bronte had suggested. I really like this page actually. It was when they were planning on invading the Never Seem and they were actually going to King, King and Key's Lone Moor and actually doing their little trade off. And uh, they were playing around. And actually, I especially love this page where Sophie said that she called Orlai Counselor Lion Girls. That was really funny actually because Sophie's still mad at Orlai for not telling her sooner that she was her biological mother, which is when Orlai lied to her previously. But yeah, this is a really cool page to see how they were going to attack or plan on setting up the Never Seen and 
setting up and seeing what they're going to do because every mission has a plan. That's the final page of this video. Let's go straight into the outro. Hey everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed this random KFTLC page challenge. It was really fun to record and I hope to do more videos like this. So I will do a part two if we get 150 likes. So make sure to drop a like down below and also make sure to comment down below what you thought of this video and do you have any more video suggestions yourself or any video ideas that you want to be maybe put on use to our channel. Subscribe down below. We are trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the summer. It would really mean a lot and it helps us put out more free KFTLC content. Join our channel to get exclusive channel membership perks that include badges, emojis, exclusive videos, bloopers with only a small monthly fee so make sure to check that out and also we just launched our merch you can see i'm wearing some of our merch we have kotlc families merch and kotlc merch so make sure to check out our merch website at bit.ly slash kotlc families merch if you want to check out all those awesome designs we have so cute designs so fits designs iggy designs and so many more awesome kotlc designs that you guys can check out this was awesome from the KOTLC fanbase. Have a great, great rest of your day. And I will see you in the next upload. Peace.